Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And this is Bucky. And uh, we're going to check out... <laughs> that was a big yawn. <laughs> death battle for Chuck Norris versus uh, Sagata Sanshiro, um, mm. who I do not know anything about. Uh, not that I know much about Chuck Norris, but I know enough about Chuck Norris to know he's a badass. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. I know nothing. So if you want all of our uh, reactions to death battle, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. Um, normally we do bets and everything for this, uh, but it's already passed because there's already been a winner for this year. Um, in case you missed it, it was me. I won. So I'll be choosing the cosplay outfit for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Um, and you're not going to want to miss that. So Love you. I'm not saying anything. I love you too. <laughs> all right. Ready? Are you ready? He's such a character. I know. All tales of superhuman feats have existed for as long as man has been telling stories. And today we pit the greatest of these legends in a clash of <laughs> Jesus, someone, Oh my god! Oh my god. No real introduction needed. <laughs> and Sega Sanchiro, defender of the Sega Saturn. Of all things, what? It's like a it's Saturn. Oh my God! Armor and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Oh, that's pretty In ancient China, there was a legend that one day a child would be born from a dragon and vanquish evil from the land. That man is not Chuck Norris. <laughs> Chuck Norris killed that man. <laughs> Carlos Ray oh Norris, God. yes, that's his real name, was born to a humble Oklahoma family in 1940. A loner, mediocre student, and all-around physically unintimidating pacifist, his childhood was pitiful. That is, until he answered the call of his country, joined the United States military, and began training in martial arts. From the day he threw his first punch, his life was changed forever. Turns out Chuck is unnaturally gifted in the ways of violence. <laughs> After his military career, he wandered America for 10 years battling in martial arts competitions. He racked up 183 victories, held the professional middleweight karate championship title for six years, and Damn. became the first Westerner in the history of Taekwondo to earn the 8th degree black belt. Hmm. But he didn't stop there. Chuck achieved black belt status in five additional disciplines. Heng Sudo, Karate, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Judo, and even one he created. Chuck Kwon Do. Ha! Close, it's actually Chun Kuk Do, or Universal Way, where Chuck harnesses the powers of the universe to achieve superhuman feats. With one hand, I can crush coal into a diamond. <laughs> so impressed at himself, he hired a team of filmmakers to document his life of newfound powers. Some of these real life accounts include the Delta Force, Walker, Texas Ranger, and Chuck Norris Karate Commandos, just <laughs> to name a few. According to these archives, Chuck can kick a man so hard that he does six backflips, <laughs> fire more bullets from a machine gun than it can actually hold without <laughs> reloading, and even transform into fucking animals. <laughs> awesome. Why doesn't he do that more often? Because the most dangerous animal in the world is <gasps> Chuck Norris. Oh my god. Chuck has taken his already unprecedented abilities even further through over 35 years of intense training on his secret weapon, the Total Gym. <laughs> he even had to create his own pants with a secret gusset to keep them from exploding off his body due to his sheer kicking power. <laughs> he calls them... Chuck Norris action genes. Yes. Naturally, powers like these have spawned hundreds, oh, wow. no, thousands of myths to what Chuck Joe? Norris is capable of, making it very difficult to separate fact from oh. fiction. That is, until Chuck released a book officially chronicling 101 of his favorite feats. Fact number 67. When Chuck Norris does push-ups, he pushes the earth down. <laughs> fact number 95. Chuck, Chuck Norris, Norris can so unscramble an egg. Around the world and punch himself oh, wow. in the back of the head. Fact number According to Einstein's theory of relativity, Chuck Norris can roundhouse kick you. One Grand Canyon is enough. Fact number 71 scientists have estimated that the energy given off by the Big Bang was roughly equivalent to one CNRK. One Chuck Norris roundhouse <laughs> kick. And those are just a few of the ones that we know are true. In addition, <laughs> legend has it that beneath his magnificent beard lies a third fist. That's a great book to bring up. Because as tough as they come, <laughs> 
or rather tougher. Once, after being beaten unconscious and buried underground inside a truck, he revived himself with a beer shower and miraculously drove the truck out of the earth. He's proficient with many different vehicles, speedboats, helicopters, a motorcycle that shoots rockets, and weaponized dolphins. <laughs> whom he can communicate with. I'll take care of Angelfish. And you guys make sure no one gets out of here. He also has a keen sense of awareness and is ready for anything, even a giant alligator parachuting in through a window. He also put together a team of heroes and saved the world on multiple occasions. This guy really is all that is man. But don't mistake unrelenting masculinity for perfection. Despite his impressive martial arts record, he's still suffered a total of 10 losses. And that's not mm. to mention his massive amount of chest hair. Although infinite and a source of power, it makes him easily grabbable and even once aided in his own, you know, death at the hands of Bruce Lee. Luckily for Chuck, death itself fears him, so he just kind of kept going. In all our years of research, we've never found an opponent worthy enough to take on the roundhouse kicking, beard punching Texas Ranger. Until now. I heard another rumor that you were bitten by a king cobra. Yeah, I was. But after five days of agonizing pain, the cobra died. <laughs> <laughs> Folklore hosts a plethora of horrifying tales. Raiden, the god of thunder, devours the stomachs of children. Kappas, monsters that dwell in rivers, drown their victims and rip their souls out their anus. And then oh. there's the legend of the Karate Master, who will beat you within an inch of your life if you aren't playing a Sega Saturn. <laughs> His name is Segata Sanjiro. When did the Sega Saturn even come out? <laughs> Men, I don't remember this thing at all. Women. Children. Nobody is safe from Sega's wrath. In 1997, Sega's okay. latest console, the Sega Saturn, was failing. Nintendo was dominating the market, and things seemed bleak for this once great video game titan. That is, until a mysterious stranger appeared with a plan so crazy, it just might work. He'd travel the land and beat the shit out of anyone not playing a Saturn. And it did work. Sales skyrocketed alongside the hospitalization of Japanese youth. But not much is known about this mysterious savior. We do know that when he appeared, he had a giant Sega <laughs> Saturn strapped to his back, which he uses to train his physical and gaming prowess at the same time. And he appears to be dating Sakura from Sakura Wars. Yes, he is somehow dating a video game character. Well, I'm not surprised because this guy has done some pretty amazing things. He's kicked a baseball for a home run, raced over 60 miles per hour on ice, barefoot, and won the World Cup by throwing a player into the ball to score the winning goal. <laughs> he is a master of disguise and breaking an enter. He can duplicate and resize himself an unlimited number of times, and once took down an entire club filled with people in only three moves. But his favorite and most powerful technique is his earth-shattering judo throw, which can make his victims explode <laughs> on impact <laughs> twice. In just a few short years, Segata had successfully terrorized his entire homeland into loving Sega's floundering console. Sales even surpassed those of the Nintendo 64. So naturally, wow. the big end got jealous and launched a huge-ass missile at Sega's headquarters. Oh, corporate squabbles. But Segata, who apparently resides on the roof of the Sega HQ, demonstrated to the world his most impressive feat of all. He just straight up left off the building onto the missile and stopped it against a glass window. <laughs> then, flipped it around and rode it into space. A missile of that size Amazing. would travel around 36 oh, wow. miles per hour, something that no window pane in existence could possibly withstand. <laughs> just to stop it without cracking the glass, Segata would have had to make the missile Missile way less than it should upon contact with him. The only possible explanation is that Segata is simply exempt from the laws of physics and theoretically capable of almost anything, such as surviving the vacuum of space. Well, until the missile blew up and he died. Oh my god! Segata san shiro wa kimi tachi no kokoro ni. Or 
did he? The departing words from the Japanese commercial announcer claims that Segato will always live on in our hearts. But also, he lived on in, you know, the regular way. While most are blinded by the tears of sadness in their eyes, if you look closely, you'll see what appears to be a shooting star. Or, Segato re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. But don't just take my word for it. One year after his supposed death, a strangely similar looking man appeared in the game Renta Hero Number 1. He mentored the main character in the ways of martial arts while claiming to have once been a great hero himself. Then in 2012, as Sonic and friends competed in the race of ages, a man bearing a giant Sega Saturn on his back was seen steering a missile away from the track. But the most irrefutable evidence of all came in 2013, when Sega de Sanchiro himself crashed a Sega Sound Unit concert and performed his own theme song live on stage. <laughs> nice. The video footage was destroyed, but we were able to recover a few surprisingly high quality pictures. And as of the February 2015 issue of Archie's Sonic the Hedgehog comic, a familiar looking Judo Master fought the Blue Blur in a tournament on Mobius, which is our own Earth 3000 years in the future. There's only one logical conclusion. Sega is not only alive, he's immortal. Death may not be able to conquer Segata, but he in turn has difficulties against this the explosive death judo throw does not work on the undead. Club zombies. And ultimately, while he successfully revived the Saturn, his skills were not enough to keep Sega on top forever. Hmm. Perhaps the reason he remains shadowed in anonymity is that he is biding his time, waiting for the right moment to step into the light and rescue Sega yet again. God knows they need him now more than ever. Regardless, it's safe to say that all should heed Segata's parting words. Or else. Never heard about that guy before. Oh my god. He's fantastic. Yeah, I'm cheering for him. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, like the law of physics don't apply to him. Like, I, I just. I'll cheer for Chuck Norris because it's Chuck Norris. Okay. We'll return to Delta Force right after these messages. It's <laughs> <laughs> got his back. Yes. Back in here. What hit you with so many rights, you're gonna beg for that. Yeah. <gasps> okay. It's cool. We didn't need the planet or anything. Yeah. It's going to take that off and check it. Oh, all those, all those planets. Firings of Saturn.
begins in Sega Saturn. They're a consolation! <laughs> nice! Apocalyptic! Holy shit, that was awesome! But who won? I don't know. I think they're still going. Our instruments just can't pick them up anymore. I believe they might have ripped a hole in space-time, so they've either traveled to another dimension or completely destroyed their plane of existence. Or both. Well, God have mercy on wherever they ended up. I guess this one just kind of spaced out. That was a fun, silly one. Yeah. Um, I never heard of the, the Sega guy. I mean, I, I grew up on Nintendo. Um, I don't think I've ever heard of Sega Saturn. Yeah, I the only Sega thing I ever owned was a Game Gear. Okay. Um, you know, everybody else had Game Boys, and I had a Game Gear, and and that was just like the one piece of Sega thing that I had that wasn't mm -hmm. Nintendo. Um, but outside of that, I I had very little like knowledge about Sega outside of like that's where Sonic the Hedgehog is played. Um, didn't know about this guy. He's they are both so wonderfully absurd. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I very much love how uh, Sagata has kind of like um, made appearances for the fans, like showing up at that music concert and singing his own song. Like mm -hmm. I, I think that that's that's really cool to like kind of come out of retirement just just for the sake of having some fun with the people who really enjoy you. Um, and Chuck Norris is. I mean, he published a book of absurd facts about himself. I mean, like that is just, he's very much leaning into the uh, the character that has become Chuck Norris. Yeah, but I mean, that's awesome is that like he's accomplished so much just like as Chuck Norris, like the non-myth that is Chuck Norris. Uh, so that's why I like that he put out a book. It's like, okay, but these are the real facts about him. And like the real facts are there's no global warming. Chuck Norris was just cold and he turned up the sun. Yep. Uh, like, so whoever came out with those must have had a ton of fun thinking oh, about yeah. that. Um, I'm sure he had uh, a bunch of input as well. Um, yeah, so if you want all of our death battle reactions, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist. Uh, yeah. Also linked to Patreon and get early ad free access to our reactions. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for Chuck Norris versus Sagato, uh, Sagata Senshiro, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive. And don't forget to check out our cosplay on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. True. I don't know what I'm in for, but I hope it's going to be fun.